Hey confirmation class, um, so today is a, a little different uh, in our typical meetings for confirmation. Uh, just because we're not physically meeting in person doesn't mean that uh, God's ministry stops or your faith journey stops. We're going to continue to have class, just uh, doing it a little differently. Um, in fact, actually, I spent uh, almost two hours yesterday in a uh, video conference with other youth pastors in the area uh, figuring out how to best do ministry when we can't actually be in person. And so this is one of the ways that we're doing it through uh, uh, video discussion and YouTube and, and worksheets, all that sort of stuff, plus live streaming, which we'll be doing tomorrow night for, for youth group. Now, uh, I want you guys to understand that uh, we all are sympathizing with your situation and that you're probably pretty bored um, and you're tired of watching the same TV shows over and over again, you're probably tired of being stuck indoors or stuck at your house. Uh, we're the same way. Um, in fact, myself, I'm on two-week quarantine since I got back from Israel, uh, not because I'm sick or anything, but just to protect the church and to protect people at the church. Um, so I, I feel you. I know what it's like to sit here and having to watch the same stuff over and over and over again. Um, but I want you to know that Sarah and myself are praying for you uh, diligently uh, as we go through this very weird and unique situation that we're in right now. I'm about 32 years old and I've never gone through something like this before. Um, so we're all kind of going through this together. Uh, but if uh, you look down below uh, in the description, you're going to see a link to a Google Docs worksheet. Uh, we're going to actually spend the next, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes or so uh, going through the lesson for today. Uh, and I want you and your parents and your family to work on this together. Um, this is an awesome opportunity for you guys to kind of really dive into your faith as a family. Uh, we don't get to do this very often because, well, I mean, you come over to the church after school uh, and you go through lessons with me and Sarah and the other Compromands. Well, this is an awesome opportunity for you guys as a family to kind of learn more about who God is and how He is trying to help you get through difficult situations like this and to prepare you for the future, for future difficult situations. Um, so go ahead, go to the, uh, the, the description down below. Uh, and you'll be able to find a link to the Dropbox, or not the Dropbox, sorry, the Google Docs worksheet. Uh, you can pull it up and, and look at it as you're watching this video. You can print it off and uh, have it off on the side. Um, but this is uh, as a way to guide you through the different activities that we have for today's lesson. Now, I am going to uh, forewarn you. Uh, I am looking past the camera because I have the notes for the lesson on my computer screen behind the camera. Um, so if you notice my eyes darting like that or moving back and forth, that's what I'm doing. I'm looking uh, at my notes, uh, which is the exact worksheet you're going to be seeing um, as you click on the link or as you print it up and have it for yourself. So uh, uh, just be mindful of that. Um, to begin today's lesson, uh, first off, uh, parents, I, I want to encourage you, if you have any questions uh, regarding this lesson or any questions regarding on how to best lead your child or children through this lesson, uh, please feel free to call or text me um, or call or text Sarah. Uh, we'll do the best that we can to guide you through, uh, through this different lesson. We, we understand that um, you may not be uh, trained in, in Bible study or in Bible teaching, um, and so we're here as a resource to help you. But we also want to encourage you and affirm you uh, as the parent to your confirmand. This is a great opportunity for you to bond with your child in a very spiritual way. Um, one of the things that God is, is very uh, keen on in Scripture is how important it is for for parents to raise their children in his ways and how the family as a whole can grow together in their faith walk. So this is a little different. This may make you uncomfortable. Uh, this may send you outside of your comfort zone. And, and I want you to know that we understand and we sympathize and we're here with you walking you through this whole process. Um, and please also understand 
uh, at any moment, uh, you are not expected to have all the answers. Um, I've been in ministry for about 10 years now. Uh, I have my master's in theological uh, studies from Asbury Theological Seminary. Uh, I spend all of my working hours in this. This is what I do for a living, and I don't have all the answers. Um, so this is a great opportunity for you and your child to kind of walk through this whole process together, um, to learn as a, as a family on how to better understand who God is uh, to you and to your family. So let's dive right into our lesson for today. And it's, it's really funny how God just crafts everything so perfectly. We are in a time of sickness and for some death. We're in a time of uncertainty and fear with the coronavirus and, and it now being a pandemic. Um, you know, with the schools extending spring break, with churches having to uh, minimize the number of people that are allowed in and worship, or even going as far as canceling worship services. Uh, you know, sports teams and professional organizations through concerts and stuff having to shut down their entire schedules for months, you know, because of the fear of, of uh, the sickness that can cause those who are, are young or elderly or immunocompromised uh, to potentially be fatal. Well, we're actually talking about death. We're talking about the afterlife. What happens after this life is over with? For us as Christians and non-Christians, what is God's plan of salvation? That is today's lesson. Um, it can be a very scary lesson. Uh, it can be a very uncomfortable lesson. Uh, everybody has their own concept and their own idea of uh, what death is and what the afterlife looks like. Some of it is founded in scripture. Other times it's founded in cultural traditions or family traditions. And so today's lesson is to provide a biblical understanding of what happens when our time here is done, when the Father has called us home and we are now spending uh, eternity with him in paradise. Um, so throughout this video, uh, you have the opportunity to pause after each section to kind of work through the activities um, and to spend time in discussion with your confirmand and, and as a parent and a child and as a family. Um, so I highly encourage you to do that at any moment. Pause the, the screen, work through the worksheet together, um, and do this as a family. Uh, what I want to encourage you to do is to start your lesson with a opening prayer. Um, you can either say a prayer uh, of your own, uh, either you as the parent, or you can encourage your confirmand to open up this lesson in prayer. Uh, or as you look at the worksheet, I have written out a prayer for you. If you are not comfortable uh, in your own prayer walk, or if your confirmand is not comfortable in their own prayer walk, uh, to say what is on their heart, I have written one for you that you can read. Um, so again, I highly encourage you, uh, go ahead and pause the video right now and uh, say, say a, a quick word of prayer before we dive into this lesson. Amen. Let's jump right into uh, activity number one. As I said, we're talking about the afterlife, and there's a, a lot of uh, different ideas of what happens after we're done here. Um, you know, we, we have different movies talking about, um, you know, what heaven looks like, or, uh, you know, what some people may experience while others may not experience it. And um, God is very clear in, in Scripture about his design for, for salvation and for the reconciliation of his children uh, with himself. God doesn't like being separated from his children. I mean, uh, parents, I am sure you fully understand this. Uh, you know, if your kids go off to camp for a week, I'm sure that, that you deeply miss them. And, and the kids, I mean, they're the same way. When I can tell you from experience, when I'm at camp, Man, by Wednesday, these kids are freaking out. They're homesick. So, you know, God's the same way. He likes being around his kids. And so he has created an environment where, as faithful followers of Jesus Christ, we have an opportunity to be brought back into his presence. And so in this first activity, we're going to kind of 
open up and discuss what does heaven actually look like, or at least what is our inter interpretation of what heaven looks like. So this is what I need you to do. I, I, if, if you have some colored pencils or crayons or colored markers, I, I want you to grab them, and then I also want you to grab uh, some scraps uh, of paper that you can draw on. And as a, as a family, I want you individually to draw your interpretation of what you think heaven looks like or what paradise looks like. Um, and, and I want you to be very detailed. Uh, you don't have to be a master painter. You don't have to be a Leonardo da Vinci. But um, just do the best that you can to draw what you think heaven looks like and, and what you hope heaven looks like. Um, after you have uh, drawn your your pictures, uh, take you know maybe ten minutes or so, five ten minutes to draw your pictures. I want you to take some time to discuss it, discuss the different details, um, see where you are similar in thought process, but also different. Because here's the thing, you do come from different generations. I mean, as parents, you're much older, and so you come from a different time period with different expectations and different life lessons and you know your children are, are living in a very unique time with social media and instant connection and instant gratification so their idea and understanding of heaven are very different but there's also some similarities between your guys's ideas of heaven because as a loving family and as as parents and as kids you guys you know talk about these things and you learn from one another so spend some time sharing with each other uh, what you think heaven looks like. So go ahead, spend the next five to ten minutes uh, drawing it, and then a few minutes kind of discussing your uh, your pictures that you drew. Again, I want to recommend, please pause this video and take some time to work this out. All right, well, welcome back. Um, if you look down in the in the description uh, of this video, and also on your, your worksheet in the Google Doc, you'll see that there's a link that you can click on. Um, that is a, uh, a video from the actual curriculum um, talking about the Methodist perspective of, uh, of the afterlife, what happens next. So I highly encourage you, please click on that video or, or you know, open it up on your phone and, and, and uh, pull that up or however it is that you're going to go about watching it and spend a few minutes now uh, watching that video. And also, at the end of the video, um, go ahead and have a few minutes of discussion uh, just about kind of what you took away from that video, what you learned, what may have shocked you or surprised you or what you may not have known about the United Methodist perspective of the afterlife. Um, so go ahead and take a few minutes to watch that video and have a few minutes of discussion. All right, so now activity number two. You'll need your Bibles for this, uh, and, and you can do this in, in uh, various different ways. Actually, you can have a physical Bible, um, or you can use uh, a Bible app on your cell phone, uh, you can use uh, the internet and in your web browser you can go to something uh, called biblehub.com, Bible Gateway, Uversion. There's all sorts of different ways uh, to look up the scripture. I mean, you can even just go to Google and type in the exact scripture and it will give you a bunch of links that will send you to uh, different websites that have the actual scripture. Um, so you'll need the Bibles or some way to get to the Bible. You also need something to write with, a pen or a pencil, or even the crayons, colored pencils, markers that you had from the previous activity. And then, of course, you need uh, some scraps of paper. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to get four pieces of paper, okay? Four blank pieces of paper. And at the top of the pieces of paper, I want you to head it with the four different verses that I'm about to read to you uh, here in a second that you can also find on your worksheet. And then with the scraps of paper, you're going to answer a question that I'm going to share with you here in a second. Um, so, on your four pieces of paper, at the top of it, head it with the following scripture. So the first piece of paper, paper number one, I want you to head it with Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. Again, it is Matthew chapter 25, 31 through 46. Again, you can find this on the worksheet. 
Now on to the blank piece of paper number two. I want you to head it with Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through chapter 9, verse 1. Again, it is Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through chapter 9, verse 1. Now on the third blank piece of paper, I want you to head it with 2 Peter, so 2 Peter, 2 Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through 14. Again, it's 2 Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through 14. And on your last piece of blank paper, the fourth piece of blank paper, I want you to head it with Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 through through 8. Again, it is Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 through 8. Again, you can pause this video to uh, write these things down. Um, you can find these, these verses on the worksheet. Um, so please take the time to, to write it down. Put them all as headings on all four pieces of paper because um, you're going to need this for the activity. Um, now, depending on the number of people that uh, you have in your group, whether it's just you and your child or or it's mom and dad and the child or mom and dad and multiple kids or it's the whole family. Um, what I want you to do is to uh, assign each verse to a different person in the group. And let's say it's mom and the child. Then each of you would take two verses. So maybe mom would take Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 and 40 to 46 and Romans chapter 8 verse 39, uh, 35 through chapter 9, verse 1, and then the child would take the other two, 2 Peter and Revelation. Or maybe it's mom, dad, the child, and a sibling. Um, so each person would have one verse, and you would find it in your Bible, and at the appropriate time, each of you would read your set of verses, okay? Um, and after you read these set of verses... I want you to spend some time answering this question as a family. And I told you, you need some scraps of paper, okay? So what you need to do, uh, or you don't actually need scraps of paper, sorry. That's, I don't know why I said you need scraps of paper. What I want you to do is on the blank piece of paper is to answer this question. Um, and I want you to work on this question together as, as a family. Um, the question I want you to answer is, what is the good news in these verses? That's the question I want you to answer for each and every single one of them. So there's one question for four pieces of paper. And, and brainstorm your answer. Uh, again, there is no right or wrong answer. You don't necessarily have to have an answer. Um, this is really more for you to have a discussion with your children and for the children to have a discussion with you. So for Matthew chapter 25, I want you to answer this question. What is the good news in these verses? The same thing for Romans same thing for 2 Peter, and the same thing for Revelation. Um, I want you to spend about 20-ish minutes, 25 minutes, uh, answering that one question for all four of those verses. And again, parents, I, I really want to affirm, and I really want you to understand that you don't have to have all the answers. Even though I do this professionally, I don't have all the answers. The, the point of this exercise is for us to dive into God's Word, to discuss with each other what God is trying to teach us. What, what are we supposed to learn from God's lesson regarding the afterlife? Because all four of these verses specifically talk about the afterlife in some form or fashion. Because again, God has a very specific plan and a very specific purpose behind his salvation plan. So go ahead and spend a few minutes uh, answering that question and pause the video and come back as we conclude uh, this, this lesson for today. To conclude today's lesson, I want to share a, a few bits of insights uh, from my perspective uh, as the youth pastor and as someone who has studied God's word regarding um, what happens next. 
This is a complicated uh, question to answer. The truth is, while we have scripture to tell us uh, the details of God's plan, none of us have gone to it and come back. Um, so we don't know definitively exactly the image and the style and the description of which uh, the afterlife will be. But one thing we do know for certain as United Methodists, but most importantly, as followers of Jesus Christ, that through his death and resurrection, by his love, we are saved from our sins and become co-heirs to his kingdom. Through living out a right and just life based on the teachings of Jesus, we have the ability to spend eternity with God in his kingdom. God is very clear in the way that things happen at the end of time. That those who believe in Him and believe in His Son, the Messiah, shall have eternal life and shall not perish. But those who choose not to believe in Jesus, who actively attack God and, and choose to destroy His church, they will not enter into paradise. Now, I want to be very clear. God is not an individual who desires for His children to suffer. He is not an individual who wants people to go to hell and torment and, and, torment and damnation. The, the truth is, He wants all people, all of His children, to accept Jesus, to profess that He is King and Lord over all things, so that He may be reconciled and brought back into a right, healthy relationship with all of His children. The sad truth is, though, that there are going to be some people who are so caught up in sin, who are so angry with God, or who choose to be so separated from God that there is no coming back from it. That there will be people who choose to walk away from God permanently. Again, that is not God's desire. I mean, He went so far in His salvation plan as to send His only Son for you and for me to die a gruesome and horrific death so that we can be saved from our sins. Because that's how much God cares about you. That's how far His grace extends to you. God doesn't want you to suffer in the afterlife. I mean, even now in this life, He doesn't want you to suffer. We see in Jeremiah chapter 29, God doesn't want us to suffer. We suffer as a result of sin, as a result of disobedience to His laws. But what we see in Scripture is a very clear description that God desires us to be in a relationship with Him, to walk daily with Him. But that can only happen if we accept His free gift of salvation and we obey His teachings and His commandments. Now, God also understands that we are people, that we are imperfect, and that we will make mistakes, that we will get caught up in the world around us, whether it's an influence from social media, it's an influence from kids at school, it's pressures from our jobs or the world around us, and at times we will step outside of God's laws. But because Jesus loves us, because God loves us so much, He is always saying, here's my hand. I want you to come back to me. Let's work on this. Let's learn from our mistakes. Let's learn from the past. Let's repent of our sins. And let's move forward. Because you may not know this, repent simply means to turn around. To get rid of the old life. Now, you can do this five years ago. You can do this five years in the future. You can do this right now. You can accept that free gift of salvation. And, and the truth is, that's what confirmation's about. It's about teaching you the truth of God's grace. And that's something that we definitely believe in as United Methodists. John Wesley was very big on grace. He wanted to provide as many opportunities for people to repent of their sins, to look at Jesus in the face and say, you are my Messiah. In my heart, I believed you died on the cross for my sins. 
And that's what we believe in as United Methodists. We believe in God's grace. We believe in an ultimate plan of salvation that someday, that not only will we go to heaven and be in paradise with God in the afterlife, but then there's gonna come a time where God's gonna come here on earth. He's gonna bring heaven down on earth. Wipe away all the tears, get rid of all the pain, get rid of all the sin, and have a perfect creation, just like the Garden of Eden. In fact, that's what the Garden of Eden was meant to be. It was meant to be paradise on earth, where we walked daily with God. I mean, He was in physical form, not in some sort of mytho mythological or mystical or, you know, as some sort of analogy or a simile or whatever, some sort of description, not physically walking with us. Because God is a parent. God loves His children. He loves you and He loves me. And so what I want you guys to take away from this, whether it's as parents, as confirmation students, or as a family, that God loves you. That God is extending His hand of grace, His hand of salvation that is free for you to accept. It's the beauty of what God does. You don't have to do anything. As students, you have to work at earning the trust and respect of, of the people around you, and you have to earn the right to go to college. You gotta make sure you do your homework. You gotta make sure you get those grades. You don't get those grades, you're gonna get punished. You're gonna get punished because you can't go to college. You going to go to college, you don't get a good job. If you don't get a good job, well, then you're gonna live day to day, paycheck to paycheck, you're gonna live a very miserable life. You have to earn your way in this world, but not with God. God's grace is unconditional. His love is unconditional, which means you don't have to do anything to earn it. It is just freely given because He wants you in paradise with Him right now. He wants you in paradise with Him when all things are done, when Jesus our King comes back to set all wrongs right. As you guys can see in the worksheet, there is a closing prayer. Um, before you go into a time of prayer, uh, I encourage you, share with each other some prayer concerns that are on your heart. Be open. Let this be a time of vulnerability. Let this be a time of bonding and growing together. Sharing with each other what is going on in your lives. And parents, I encourage you, ask your kids, what is really going on? How can I really pray for you? There's no judgment, there's no consequence, there's no embarrassment or shame that you want to pray for your children. But what's really cool is that the kids, you kids, you confirmation students, you get an opportunity to pray for your parents, to pray for your family. Ask them, how can you pray for them? What is going on in their lives that you want to surrender to God? Because man, let me tell you, you know this from confirmation and from youth group and church, there is nothing greater than when the community comes together and they pray for one another. Pastor Steve talks about this all the time on Sunday morning. The power of intercessory prayer when people pray on your behalf. Because here's the thing, you may not know this about God, but when you pray, He listens every single time. But then you get you and your parents and your siblings, then you get your friends, you get the youth group, you get the church, we're all praying together. It becomes this loud scream to God. And God pays attention and he answers every single one of the prayers. So spend this time talking to each other, sharing with each other about how you can be praying for one another. But not only praying, but how has God blessed you this week? Amongst all this, this craziness and this fear and this uncertainty, God is working His will and He's blessing us beyond our wildest imaginations. Share with each other how God has blessed you or how have you seen God this week? How have you witnessed His grace and His love? How have you seen Him working in your lives? Now, this can be a, a challenge for some people because you don't do this regularly. And especially for parents, there's this idea that uh, you need to be these invulnerable superheroes where nothing 
is wrong. But here's the thing. Lead by example. Share your vulnerabilities. Share that, you know, sometimes in this world, I get really frustrated. Sometimes I get frustrated with people's lack of respect. Or maybe, you know, I get really angry with this, or my heart breaks that I saw someone do that. Share that vulnerability with your kid. Let them see a different side of you. Because man, man, that's gonna, that's gonna change your relationship with your kids. And the same thing with the kids. I, I, I'm telling you right now, don't be a typical teenager when mom and dad or whoever it is that's with you right now and says, hey, how can I pray for you? Or what's going on? Or how are you doing? Don't do the typical teenage answer and say, eh, I'm okay. Everything's all right. Eh, don't do that. All right, I'm telling you right now, don't do that. Be honest, be vulnerable. And I know you do it because you do it in confirmation. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. We have, we're at the end of class, we're asking for prayer concerns, crickets, nothing. No one talks, no one says anything. It's super uncomfortable, super awkward. Share. Let this be a time where you and your family grow closer together. And then again, I encourage you to pray out. Um, there is a prayer written. If you don't feel comfortable in coming up with your own prayer, uh, I have given one for you on the worksheet, so please use that, or use that just as an example. Build off of that prayer. And I want you to know that as your youth pastor, and the same thing goes for Miss Sarah as the children's director, we are praying for you right now. We're praying that God is working through you. We're praying that God is walking with you that he's comforting you during this very difficult and uncertain time. And I want to encourage you to lean into God, to trust him, because he's doing all the right things to make all things good. A little bit of housekeeping information. Uh, we will be live streaming uh, youth group tomorrow night at six o'clock on our Facebook page. So make sure you go to that. Um, the link is in the description down below. Um, also, uh, down below in the comment section, please leave a comment on, on how you grew uh, as a family in this activity and uh, ways that we can improve this moving forward. Uh, from what I was told from Pastor Steve for the next two weeks, this started yesterday on Monday, uh, for the next two weeks there is no youth and children's activities. Uh, so again, next Tuesday, there will not be any confirmation. Even though uh, you may be back at school, uh, we will not be meeting in person for confirmation. Uh, I, again, I am under two weeks worth of quarantine, so I won't even be in the office next week. Um, but I will have a <clears throat> excuse me. I will have another lesson uh, prepared just like this one today, um, so that we can continue to grow because God doesn't stop just because we're not together. Um, but again, watch our live stream tomorrow. Please be engaging in chats uh, and, and participate in the live stream um, and continue to monitor our social media via our Facebook, our Twitter, and our Instagram accounts so that you know everything that is going on uh, within the youth group over the next couple of weeks. Guys, I love you very much and uh, I look forward to getting back together in person with you uh, in a couple of weeks. If you have anything that you need uh, for prayer concerns, uh, please text me, DM me on social media, uh, and I'll be sure uh, to share that with Sarah, and we will be in prayer for you. Guys, I will see you next week in the next lesson. Bye.